Harvard is America's oldest, richest, and most prestigious university. Super impressive people go there. It's not a power to be taken lightly, but a small group of activists is determined to go head-to-head -head with them. We sat down recently with Edward Bloom. He's the president of Students for Fair Admissions. They are suing Harvard for anti-Asian discrimination. Watch. Mr. Bloom, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. So Harvard intentionally controls the number of Asians who are admitted. That seems like the clearest possible, if true, the clearest possible example of racial discrimination you can imagine. It's racial discrimination and it's a quota. The quota today is against Asians, much like the quota back in the 1920s and 30s was against Jews. In 1992, 19% of Harvard's incoming freshmen were Asian. In 2013, 18 percent were Asian. During this period of time, Tucker, the number of Asians applying to Harvard came close to doubling. Now, is this just a coincidence that every year from 92 through 2013, the numbers stay the same? That's not a coincidence. Maybe they just didn't do well enough in the SAT. Oh, I don't think so. Oh. I, I think um, studies have been done uh, for the last two decades that show that Asian Americans uh, score about 140 points higher than their white counterparts, 270 points higher than Hispanic applicants to Harvard and the Ivy League, and, and 450 points higher than African Americans. So let's stop pretending this is real. Everybody knows it. Everyone with kids applying to college knows this is happening. There's no, really no debate about it. People involved in it will admit it after two drinks. And so why is this permitted to continue when it's so clearly racial discrimination and against the letter and the spirit of laws banning this kind of thing? Well, 70 percent of Americans believe that a student's race or ethnicity should not be a consideration in college admissions. Sadly, there are two institutions that we're fighting against. Number one, college administrators and bureaucrats and admissions officers are wed to the idea that your race should be used to help you or your race should be used to harm you in your admissions process. That's the big problem. So the why academy. is this different from the practices we rightly decry from, say, the 1950s, where institutions punished people and rewarded others on the basis of factors they couldn't control, like their race. Why well, is this different? Well, it's not different. It, racial preferences that favored whites back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s was wrong. Yeah. Now racial preferences that favor African Americans and Hispanics, that's wrong as well. You cannot you cannot remedy past discrimination with new discrimination, and that's what colleges but, are but doing. But the, the argument is that nobody is hurt by this, but it sounds like you have numbers that show the opposite. So the question is, how can you get documents that prove intent here? Well, this lawsuit against Harvard is now in its third year. Harvard by order of the court, had to turn over six years of admissions data to us. Our experts have analyzed that data. They've compiled a huge report that will be submitted to the court. And sooner or later, the American public will have these numbers that they can analyze themselves. And we think it will be incontrovertible that Harvard is discriminating against Asian Americans specifically. And is, is Harvard denying it, just to be clear? Yes. Yes. They're saying this Harvard, is not going, it's just accidental that the admissions rate for this one group is exactly the same, even though its population has doubled. It's a coincidence that Harvard doesn't really put a thumb on the scales. They're weighing holistic um, uh, admissions criteria, such as leadership abilities and sociability, much like they did with Jews back in the 1920s right. and 30s. Mr. Bloom, good luck in your suit. And Thank I hope you, you keep Tucker. us posted. Thank you. Thank you. Whether Harvard currently has a quota system, and it does or not, one visiting professor thinks it should. Education professor Kalwant Bhopal argued in a recent blog post that elite universities should explicitly implement a quota system for all races as a way to fight white privilege. Jason Nichols is a professor at the University of Maryland's Department of African American Studies, and he joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank so you. the idea that... Elite universities ought to have a quota system. I, I think we just learned in the last segment they do. Harvard does. But it's hard to know what it would achieve. So I just pulled this at random. But Harvard, for example, admits 
a higher percentage of African Americans than the population of the country. So the country is about 13 percent black. Harvard's income in class is about 15 percent. So what would a quota system mean there? So first of all, let's I refer you to two cases. Okay. Regents of the University of California versus Bakke, 1978, right. and of course Gratz versus Bollinger. Uh, 2003. Yes. Both of those determined that racial quotas are illegal. So right. we don't have a racial quota. I would say if you are absolutely certain that there is a racial quota at Harvard, which I don't think there is, I would say you should sue. But at the, the same the, time, they're being sued, actually. Yeah. Oh, we, they, we just interviewed the guy but, suing but for him. But for a different reason. But at, at any rate, I would say that uh, to talk just about quotas misses Dr. Bhopal's primary point, right. which is that we have a dearth of African-American and Latino students at top flight universities. And as a matter of fact, uh, the Brookings Institute just did a study where it was, uh, they determined that 4% at flagship universities around the country uh, are African-American, whereas college age, uh, the college age population is 15% African-American. So you can see that there is a gap there. For and, sure. And he's trying to say that something drastic needs to be done. I don't agree that necessarily that has to be quotas, or we have to go back to that, but something needs to be done. Well, I actually agree with that. Something does need to be done. Absolutely. And part of the problem is that secondary schools, high schools, are terrible in black neighborhoods. Almost all of them, not all, but almost all, are terrible. And nobody ever says anything about it. And our solution is just to import immigrants to make up the difference. And I think that's a massive failure on the part of the country toward its African-American population. So, I mean, I agree with you completely. I just am very skeptical that setting quotas for African-Americans in college will help anybody on the south side of Chicago, for example, because you know that it won't. It's going to help the kids of affluent parents and well, not so, the people who need it. Well, let me tell you one thing that was done. Of course, you know, at, at the University of Texas, where they made it so that if you were in the top 10 percent, correct, you could get into the university. You got automatic admission into the University That's right. of Texas. And that actually made for a relatively diverse uh, population at the University of Texas. And guess what? Right wing people complained. They said it wasn't fair. I'm in the 11th percentile. And then to me, that says something about entitlement right well, there. Well, I don't know. I mean, you could also make the case, I mean, not to argue Texas education policy with you, but I mean, the high, high schools are very different. I mean, so, you know, the Highland Park High School is really hard, and other high schools in Texas are really easy, so it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. That's, I guess, the point. But look, the real point is that America is much more complicated demographically than it was 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Sure. So Nigerian immigrants, for example, make more on average, from Africa, make more on average than white Americans. That's a kind of outside the narrative that you're pushing, it seems to me. Well, uh, again, going back to just really quickly to, to fix one thing that you said about the University of Texas, is that their graduation rates rose. More people were graduating, which means that a lot of those kids from some of those schools that you say were terrible were actually very capable of matriculating at the University of Texas. But I'm sure Texas. they are. That doesn't surprise me. That doesn't yeah. surprise me at all. I'm, I'm, look, I mean, there are a ton of smart kids in all neighborhoods. I, I'm not right. saying that. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. look, the truth is you can meddle with the, the admissions policies at elite universities all you want, and it doesn't cha change the core problems, which is... You know, the schools are terrible. The overwhelming majority of kids don't have a dad at home. I mean, these are not problems that are solved in an admissions office, but we ignore those problems and pretend that Harvard can fix them. Well, I think absolutely there, there are social issues that we need to fix, but I still think at the same time we need to recruit students from all different backgrounds because one of the things that, that's been proven in many different studies is that diversity actually helps all students learning in a diverse environment, economically, racially, and ethnically, actually helps all students, and that includes affluent white students. Good. Well, let's, let's see if this, since you believe in diversity, does this number bother you? So mm -hmm. the percentage of Americans who identify as white Protestants is about 30 percent. At Harvard, white Protestants make up uh, about 17 percent, less than 17 percent. So they're dramatically underrepresented, far more underrepresented than black students at Harvard. Is that a cause for concern? Why wouldn't we care about that if we care about diversity? So, so you're, you are, I think we need to look up. I'm using the rules that you set you are to saying, ask you a sincere no, here, here's question. Here's the is, question. Should all groups benefit from diversity or just ones you like? Are, are we saying that, are you trying to tell me right now that white 
students are the are the minority. I'm saying what affluent white, white, white students. So white, let, let's talk well, about. No, no, I'm actually talk. saying factually that affluent the white Protestants of all income levels are dramatically underrepresented at Harvard. So if it's a concern that this group or that group is underrepresented, why wouldn't that be a concern? Because you don't well, like them. Well, I mean, let's the let's, let's talk let's talk about universities nationwide. Well, how about just Harvard? You we, have, we you have, have the numbers of the, for Harvard. Why just talk about Harvard? Because we're talking about because, university education. Because I happen to have the numbers right here. So just answer. Okay. Does it bother you that here you I, have? I don't know because I don't oh, believe it I don't believe oh, okay. <laughs> that white <laughs> Protestants are underrepresented. When I just gave you uh, statistics from the Brookings Institute that says that blacks are underrepresented nationwide. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, you know? and I and I didn't. And, and white Protestants. I, I, I didn't contest that, but white Protestants are dramatically underrepresented at Harvard, the most prestigious college in America. And I'm just saying, if the goal is to make sure that each group and, and what, what is represented, what historical issue, what historical not, issue no, no. has kept white Protestants I, out I, of Harvard University? I don't University? know, but I, I'm just saying, if each group has so there to be, is none, is what you're saying. Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm no, saying so, that if the rule what is, is that every group needs if, to be if represented. You're not aware, hold on, does every group need to be represented proportionally or not, or just some? I'm saying we, one of the things. Oh, with oh, tough action, question. No, it's not a tough question. <laughs> it's an easy question to answer. Uh -huh. Not it's every group easy. needs to be represented proportionally. Is that what you're saying? I, what I'm saying is that every group that has been underrepresented historically, oh, historically, okay. and actually at present nationwide, okay. that that needs to be fixed. Is the rules are more complicated than I realized, Professor? It's great to they see. They are. You. They are complicated. Thank you.